Good afternoon everybody, Uneducated Economist here. I thought I'd give you guys a lumber update video just because I know how much you guys love the lumber update videos. And uh, there's a lot of things happening right now within the lumber industry. Mainly the futures price has dropped dramatically, a lot more than I thought it would have gone. Um, at one point I saw it at 430 per thousand. In fact, I think it closed around 438. I didn't check it before I started the video. I guess I should have done that for a lumber update video. But it's somewhere around the 430, 450 per thousand. And this is dramatically low considering what it has been for the last couple of years. Now, if you look back over like the historical average... 400 per thousand is a very normal price like you know we've seen 400 per thousand many times for you know throughout the throughout the years and it's not like 450 per thousand is some kind of like awesome position for lumber to be in right now so when you think about like what it's been over the course of the last say 10 years and where we are today it's not the average price anymore 400 per thousand is very low considering everything that has taken place. We have more input cost. We have more labor cost. We have bigger issues with like everything that goes along with the inflation and transportation and all that stuff. So just because the lumber prices have come down to that 450 per thousand doesn't necessarily mean that we are going to see the retail follow the same suit. And what I guess I mean by that is like, Back when we saw 450 per thousand prior to say 2018, two by four eight might have sold for around four dollars a piece, four four and a half. Well, now at 400 per thousand, we may end up seeing lumber like the same two by four that sold for four dollars now selling for five or five and a half, because of the added input cost that it takes for transportation and all the storage and all the other stuff that goes along with it. And it's hard to believe about like storage, but yeah, time sitting is costing money and that adds more to the price of the lumber. Um, it's hard to understand that part, but yeah, that does add to it. So if there is faster transactions, more, more um, what should I say, uh, inventory turnover, then you can actually see the prices dropping because of that, because of the amount of lumber that's moving through the system. When it sits stagnant, a lot of times the prices can't drop just simply because you can't turn that inventory over. So if you get stuck at high lumber prices, unless you can sell that lumber, you're not going to be able to buy in new lumber to drop the prices down. Does all that kind of make sense? Well, anyway, so what can I predict for the future coming in? Right now, we have very low prices and the inventory levels are really starting to tighten up. And what I mean by that is that the mills are going to curtail development. And you can already see the reports of it taking place. In fact, I'll leave a, I'll leave an article down in the description that's talking about how Canfor, or not Canfor, Canfor is uh, curtailing development until I believe the end of the year. So like they are shutting down some of their BC mills for months. Like they're, they're not gonna be producing for quite some time. And it's not a surprise when you see the prices drop as low as they do to find that these British Columbia mills start curtailing development. These are high cost, high output producers. And so even though there is mills out there that can produce lumber at less cost, so like the input cost going into the mills, like say even here in Oregon or Washington, it may be cheaper and the amount of lumber that we produce could be sold for the same amount when it comes to the British Columbia area, they are high producers, high cost, high output. So the things that happen in the British Columbia area, the rest of the lumber markets are gonna feel the impact from that. So even though like our mills here in the United States may not have the same issues that the British Columbia mills will have, whatever happens up there will impact the rest of the rest of the lumber market. And when we think about like wildfires, when we think about those bug infestations that had taken place, when we think about all the things that had happened over the course of the last few years, British Columbia is the place that you must keep an eye on if you wanna know what's gonna happen inside of the lumber industry. So watching the mills up there in British Columbia start to curtail development, that is going to be a telling sign for what we are going to experience throughout the rest of the lumber industries. It would not surprise me if the lumber continues to stay down that we would find even more mills curtailing development, even ones here in the United States. Now these high cost producers up there in the British Columbia area, 
when the stumpage fees goes up. This is really where the problem starts to exist because those stumpage fees is something that the Canadian government puts on the the timber industry. So like if you are going to cut a tree down and sell it to the mill, the government gets a little piece of that, right? They're going to charge you for that. And that's called the stumpage fee. Now this stumpage fee, when they start increasing that, that fee, that's the input cost going into the mill. And because these British Columbia mills up there, these BC mills are high cost, high output. If those stumpage fees goes up, that cost going into the mill, that's less profit going out, those high producers, that's when they start curtailing development. Now, it was real easy for the government to increase the stumpage fee when lumber was selling for a dramatically high price. They were looking at the lumber mills and saying, hey, you guys are making a lot of money off of this. We're gonna increase the stumpage fees because obviously you're making a killing out of this. But they adjust these things like every six months. So here they were looking six months ago at high lumber prices. They adjust the stumpage fees, but now here we have lumber prices back at 400 per thousand, 450 per thousand. The mills are getting charged higher prices for the lumber, for the lump, for, gee whiz, for the logs coming in, and they're getting less profit as it goes out. That's the problem. So how long can that last for? Well, it can last for quite some time, and that's why I imagine we're seeing Canfor curtailing the development at the rate that they are or at the scale that they are or for the length of time that they really are. That's how I should say it. Gee whiz, guys, I'm a little babbly this afternoon after coming off of work. Okay, so what do I see happening for the future here? Well, I see that there is going to be a slowdown taking place in the building industry. We can see that from the building permits, you know, the building issuance and how much traffic I'm seeing personally within the lumber yard that I work at. Now, what I find very interesting is that the retail customer is starting to make their presence again. And this is something that I hadn't seen like most of the summer. Retail was not there, like just the walk-in customer, the what I refer to as the weekend warrior. They're not like a contractor or a builder or something like that. They're just, you know, somebody who's going to be building a deck over the fence over the weekend and you know, that's their, you know, that's their weekend project or something, but we're finding a lot more of those type of customers coming in. So it's obvious to me that the lumber prices have come down and are now intriguing the customer to come in and start doing those projects. I've called this like project delaying fatigue, right? They are just tired of waiting. They're tired of waiting for the prices to come down. They were tired of all those lead times. And now that they find that the prices have made somewhat of a move downward, they're jumping into the game. They're not gonna wait any longer. So that's a lot more of what I'm seeing taking place right now. There's a lot more decks taking, you know, happening, a lot more people interested in fences. There's a lot more like two by four and plywood just being sold. I would imagine like, you know, a lot of people building, you know, chicken coops or woodsheds or building shelves in the garage or something. But, you know, when you think about it, like plywood was at $80 a sheet. Now it's at $34 a sheet. Two by fours were thirteen fifty. Now they're at like five twenty five or something. And there's people who are telling me they're sending me reports that they are finding lumber much cheaper than what I'm even selling it for. And that doesn't surprise me. I mean, I'm out here on the coast. If you get closer to the distribution hubs, you're going to find that the lumber prices are probably going to be a lot less then. But this is exciting for a lot of people who have been postponing their projects, waiting for the opportunity to be able to pick up this lumber at a better price, and it's starting to happen now. And so how long this will last? Probably not very long. If we have places like, you know, mills like Canfor shutting down production, it's only going to be a matter of time before that inventory tightens up and the prices start to move back up. So I'm assuming that's probably going to be happening somewhere towards the end of the year. But as far as low prices go, I think we're in. Like this is where the low prices are going to, going to be at 400 per thousand. I wouldn't hesitate too long on picking up your lumber if you're looking to do a project. I think that you know now is going to be your timing. You know, over the next you know month or so. Um, after that, it's going to be a hard guess to to try and figure out where it is that lumber prices are going to go. Um, even if we saw a dramatic downturn in prices, generally, unless that lumber yard or the distributor that you are working with, unless they have a high turnover, even a dramatic drop in lumber prices doesn't necessarily reflect into the retail until it stays down for a significant amount of time. So like I said, we're here at 400 per thousand. We've been here for a little while. I see that, you know, reflecting into the retail market over the next month or so. But after that, I would not, I wouldn't wait too long because after that, going into the new year, 
there's going to be a lot of um, there's going to there's going to be a lot of questions to to you know to look at at that time. Like, where are the builders going to be? How much demand for housing is going to exist right then? Obviously, we're going to be in the middle of winter, so there's going to be less projects for the weekend warrior to be doing. So it's going to be very questionable on where prices are going to move after the new year. I don't see them going dramatically higher. Like the 800 per thousand to me is seems like it would probably be the high, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't go higher, and it doesn't mean that we might not see the prices go lower. I mean, we got the dollar index right now at 113. Countries all over the world are freaking out about how strong the dollar is getting. The commodities are starting to drop. I find copper out there is starting to come down, and that's going to be a really interesting thing to watch. So if you're really into commodities and watching commodities, I would keep an eye on copper. I think copper is going to be an interesting play over the next 10 years. Um, I, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised that if you find copper to be one of the best investments that you find in the next decade especially when it comes to the miners there is going to be a huge demand for it and there is an obvious shortage of supply so that's going to be an interesting one to talk about here coming into the future and maybe we'll try and do a video on something like that but i'm gonna leave it at that all right uneducated economist you guys let me know